the nurse took the baby from the parents in the hospital, every parent's worst dystopian mm -hmm. nightmare, because they made a, a medical decision for their child that the nurse and subsequently the government did not agree with. This is not abuse. It's, it's abuse of government. Well, and specifically, their lawsuit says that this was in 2018 after the Department of Health and Human Services and the, you know, the Department of Children's Services had said, hey, this is kind of an overreach and nurses and doctors weren't required to report if people wanted to renege the vitamin K shot. They had been told previously by their health care provider, they sound like decent parents, they had four other kids sitting at home that were perfectly healthy and happy, there were no complications in the pregnancy or the birth process, and they said, hey, we're going to waive that. And a nurse actually broke the law and took it upon herself to say, no, my decision is better than your decision. And I think it is increasingly um, scary how people within the medical community think what they say is best and don't even encourage people to get a second opinion or don't even have a dialogue about where their decision making is coming from. And the bottom line is, People that, t educators and medical providers are mandatory reporters. So if they legitimately thought that these parents were abusive and doing something that was detrimental to this infant's life, then they should have reported it. But in this case, I can't, I cannot figure out and fathom an argument that unless this was a crack baby that immediately needed to go get, you know, medical assistance to come down from that, why taking it from its mother moments after her birth is, is a positive thing. I mean, I, I, I would charge this nurse with, with kidnapping. Even if she felt mandatory reporting was necessary, you don't steal that child first and then report it. It's, yep. it's, it's so ridiculous, the overreach here. And I know we talked about this last week when we talked about a similar case, but what is the limiting principle here? If the medical community feels like they have the arm of the law to enforce their medical recommendations, then where does that end? I mean, there are mm -hmm. so many medical treatments that parents choose whether they want to apply that treatment to their child or not. Maybe one of the most famous ones would be a child diagnosed with ADD or ADHD. The doctor recommends that the parents put the child on Ritalin and medicate the ADHD. Yeah. A lot of parents decide they don't want to do that because there are side effects or they just simply don't want their child on medication. If we're operating under these standards, what would prevent the government from stealing those parents' child and forcing that child to go on medication because the doctors recommended it. Ritalin, Adderall, Xanax, birth control. I mean, yes. I really don't think it's a far stretch for people within the medical community and then, you know, wielding the hand of the government to be utilizing those tools to make sure that the parents medicate their children or do with their children in the way that they think is best. Now, listen, we all know that Ben's wife is a doctor. I have met people in the medical field in my family, doctors and nurses, and I appreciate and deeply admire them for their service because they are needed. But I also do not think that their singular word or their singular opinion is the end all and be all. And it is scary to me how, especially when we've seen, they think it's okay. And for some odd reason, people who take the Hippocratic Oath think it's okay to kill a baby in utero, okay to toss parental rights out the door, and okay for a child to make a decision about a sex change, but you know, parental rights, not okay.